Hi guys, it's Ian Wilson from Qtips and we're carrying on with our tutorials on creating the layout. Now today's tutorial, or this tutorial, we're going to take the image that we scanned. So this was the layout. Remember we I planned this layout. I then scanned it and I, I needed to scan them separately because they were both A4s. I then stitched them together in an imaging package. We are now going to geo-reference this image in QGIS. So let's open that QGIS project, which I saved in the project folder. Okay, there we go. That project is open. And this is where we were. So we're going to geo-reference that image in QGIS. And we do that using a plugin. And we need to turn that on now. It's a core plugin. So it is packaged with QGIS. And we just need to go access it in the repository. So it has all the plugins, but if we select the installed option, it should be listed here. There we go. It's called the GeoReferencer. And we just select it and close. And that'll then give us the, the option to access the GeoReferencer. And I think it's under the rasters. There we go. It's under the raster drop down menu. And it's called the GeoReferencer. Right. So now that'll, uh, depending on if you've used it before, um, it might dock the, the window in your view, or it might be a separate window. Um, docked, uh, I'm going to use it as a docked window. And the first thing I want to do is add that raster that I need to georeference. So I'm going to add the raster, and there it is, site image. Okay, and it doesn't have a projection yet. Okay, so now this is where the control points that we created are going to come in handy. They are little dots here and really tiny dots, I think. I hope they came through. They, they did come through, but they are very, very small dots on our, on our scanned image. So what we'll do is use those to georeference. And just a, a nifty trick when you using the georeferencer, you should try and use your, your snap settings. And those snapping options are under the settings menu. And we're going to use the advanced option. And we want to snap to the control points. If you select control points and set the sets, you can set it at 20 if you like. Uh, and instead of map units, I'm going to say pixels. Now, I often choose pixels instead of map units because map units could be degrees or meters. And if I always just set it to pixels, it, uh, whether it's 10 pixels or 20 pixels, it, it's, it's quite a nice way to have a consistent snap. So I'm going to apply that and say OK. Uh, then what we can do is start um, telling the program which control point belongs to the uh, the point versus the the position on the raster. So we need to select it first on the raster. So I want to zoom in slightly to this first one, which we called A, and then we want to tell it to add a control point, and as near as you can to the center. Now what we can do is say select from map. Now with our snap setting set, we don't have to zoom in. We can just get to within 20 pixels and set that control point. And then zoom into the next one, top right here somewhere. There it is. Same thing again. Add a control point as close as you can to the middle. Select from map. There's our control point there. OK. So now we've done two. And bottom left here, that's where it was. Okay, it still came through, which is good. Select from map. Okay, so now we've, as you see, as you start adding them, the, the control point table at the bottom here starts getting populated. Zoom to the last one, which was just on the bottom right hand corner. Add a new one. Actually, I might, maybe I should just zoom in a bit closer. Um, your accuracy uh, will be get better as you zoom in closer. Um, so you need to determine uh, what the best scale to zoom into would be for your uh, accuracy or your purposes. Okay, so there we go. We've we've set the four control points. We've told the program that this position on the raster is that vector uh, control point. And we just need to change the settings quickly. The transformation settings. There's a couple op options for transformation types. 
And for just four control points, uh, the linear um, transformation type will be fine. We're going to use nearest neighbor. And we're going to set the target SRS, which is this basically the coordinate reference system, or the spatial reference system, as your spatial reference system, coordinate reference system, as the same as our project, which is already selected. So we can say project. And then what we're going to do is create a new world file. So this is not going to regenerate uh, an image or generate a new raster image. All it's going to do is create a little text file that tells the program what the spatial reference of the image is. So let's click OK. Now nothing's happened yet. Next thing we need to do is click on this little play button which will generate that file. So let's click play. And it's been added. So if we compare it, we we'll drag it under the site and we zoom in Maybe make this a different color. Um, red, maybe. So it sticks out so I can tell the difference between the raster and the, and the actual site boundary. Red's not great. So maybe I should just make it thicker. Make it one. Not such a dark red. Let's make it a brighter, lighter red. And there we go. Okay, so it's not 100%. I mean, if, we, if we're getting fussy now, and I'm not getting fussy, we can just measure it quickly. Uh, where's my little measuring tool? And we can see that it probably should be there. It's more accurate. And uh, what? How many, how many meters out is that? Hey, where's my, little, where's my little tool? There's my window there. So it's telling me that it's... Yeah, it's like 0.7 meters out, you know, but I think we, it's going to be okay for this uh, tutorial. Okay, so we're done with the georeferencer. We can turn it off. So you can just turn that off. And we can now start digitizing using uh, some CAD tools. Okay, so just quickly, I thought it might be useful to show you what that little text file or world file looks like. Um, it, the program will always place it in the same uh, folder as the image because they need to be read together. What the program does is it goes and looks for the world file and if it has one, it uses it to georeference your raster. So if we open this little text document, um, I'm just using Notepad to open it. There we go. This is the text file. So now what, what, the, what it's telling the program <coughs> excuse me, is the first line is for the pixel depth. And the last line is for the pixel width. Uh, these two values are for, for rotation. And then the fifth line is for the um, latitude, no, longitude. And then the last line is for latitude. So if the program knows the size of your pixels and the position of the top left hand pixel, so, so these last two coordinates are for the top left hand pixel, if it knows the size of the pixels and the position of the top left hand pixels, then it can actually uh, use that information to, to reference your whole image. Okay, so that's that's pretty much how that world file works. And sometimes this one's got a, the extension WLD, but for JPEGs, they sometimes will be JGW for a, a, a JPEG world file or for a TIFF, a TF, TFW. So just make sure that uh, if, you're, if you're getting an image from someone and it does have a world file, those two are friends and they must always stay together. If they get split up, then the, the uh, referencing for that image would be lost. Okay, so that's just something I thought I'd point out. And that is the basics of georeferencing in QGIS using the georeferencer. So in the next tutorial, what I'll do is, is use this georeferenced image and some CAD tools to start digitizing this layout. And uh, yeah, once once we've done that, we'll, we'll move on, create polygons, and um, be able to start assigning attribute data to our to our layout and uh, take it from there make pretty maps okay so please join me for that tutorial uh, it should follow on from this one cheers